Hey guys, Dave from Nardarchy. Four Nards, by Nards, hang out with this nerd. Nardarchy's Ted. How do you feel about playing the Mega Dungeon that never ends? Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So, who's this coming from? Jeffrey? This is coming from Jeffrey. Came in as a GM911, but it's like, it's not an emergency, but I want your thoughts on, on this feeling. He's got a cool idea. We want so, to out. if you want to send send us GM911s, nerdarchy at gmail.com, and just put GM911 in the subject, preferably with some kind of other tagline that brief, briefly sums it up. Yeah, also, you know, any if you have your suggestions. But, okay, so he's got this idea for, an, for a town that's been built up around this tower. And, essentially, it's a magical tower. When you enter, it creates a pocket dimension. I think there's, like, 22 levels or 21 20, levels. 20 levels, based, and it's based off of what character level the party is. Mm. So, if you go in as a level 1 party, you're going to go to the first floor, and it's randomized. So, even if you make a map doesn't matter. It yeah, if you come back. Right. But no one's actually survived the tower, is my understanding. Well, he yeah. says that it's rumored that this tower is unbeatable, mm. but there's nothing in there that says, like, oh, everyone has gone in and has died. So well, you... he did say people have left, but they haven't beaten the tower, per right. se, I guess is the idea. Uh, you know, and so it's like, and every time you complete the the level, whatever that entails, beating the big boss or solving a problem or something like that, you then get promoted to the next level of the tower. And... That gives you the quote unquote level up. So, this part of this premise is literally yawning portal under the the under the mountain dungeon. Under mountain dungeon is basically this, right? You go to the tavern, you pay them, they'll lower you down into you know into the dungeon. When you come back, if you've prepaid to get put back out, they will lower the winch to you again to to raise you out. And occasionally, monsters will fly up out of the hole and attack people in the tavern. The, you know, and there's all kinds of cool, you know, curios and stuff like flying around the tavern. So, and the idea is like, you know, a town like kind of built up around the the tavern and around this place. So, so, so the premise is there. It's been done before. That doesn't mean we shouldn't do it again and shouldn't do it in a different way. Well, that's that's going down. This is going up. Completely different. Completely different. And I, I like it. It's a fun idea. You know, it's kind it's kind of like the ultimate tourist trap, if you know what I mean. So you you know, you get there. And you know, you've actually have a little bit of experience of building dungeons like this, which you kind of borrowed from a board game. Well, you know, you've got the ability to steal from wherever. And Nerdarchy is always talking about when it comes to designing stuff or getting inspiration, steal, 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 because Everything's been done already. It's just, you're putting your twist on it. So Betrayal at House on the Hill has got these room tiles. As you go and explore, you get to then lay these things out. And every time you go into the game, because you're making, you know, every single player at the table is making a choice, you know, three, three plus people, you've got the ability that every time the house is going to be different. And it always looks different from the outside versus the inside. So, you don't, you never know. So, I've actually used that style of game in you know, one of my sessions. I've actually run the, run the adventure multiple times with different themes, but still having that, you know, lay out the tiles or, you know, lay out the dungeon ahead of time to figure things out of how you want it to be. So, it creates this random foot thing. And you could easily do this. I mean, there's random dungeon generators right online we'd be like i want x amount of rooms and it'll spit it out for you so you could literally do that ha have them pre-ready to go per the each time you're going to run this so that part isn't really that difficult it's just a matter of like what kind of adventure do you want to run tonight how is the th how is the tower going to be themed tonight maybe you run with different themes maybe one time it's you know more of a an arabian theme because it's magic you can do whatever you want or another time it's jungles so you you could you could literally take this concept and because this is not you're just going down into the underdark or going down into the beneath going down into caves you're going to a, a a pocket dimension it doesn't have to be stone tower it's whatever so i would go ahead and i would create a table or a chart that has all the different 
options that you want to put on it. You know, is it Egyptian? Is it Arabian? You know, is it is it in a structure? Is it not? You know, are you in the swamp, the jungle, the desert? Environmental conditions are going to be a possibility, and it's set up by the dungeon, and it's this, it's supposed to test you. Maybe you set this up that you've got twenty different locales slash themes and twenty different you know enemies you know obstacles however you want to look at it and as you as you complete one the dungeon crosses it off for you because you've you've done this so you as the gm know this the players might not you know figure it out right away but maybe they will and it's like oh well maybe we should start taking notes and they start compiling as to what's going on and now okay well we know that the final floor is going to be you know underground against fiends and they you know circle it off and then they can get prepared for it now it, it really depends upon what you run, want to run and how you want to set up this tower but i think that would be fantastic to have you know just those 20 options per thing and and be able to say okay figure it out every time now I, I, I like where you're going with this because I was actually thinking something similar because I feel like there's two paths that would be fun. One is it's just always random. You never know what's going on and you could totally do that, right? And you could have different themes that run through that particular tower and, you know, a big bad and all these different trusts to figure that out. And the other one is like you said, no, there's actually X amount of towers. They all exist, but which one you end up in, you, ju you know, you just don't know. And, you know, once you do one, you can't you can't do that one again. You know, every time you enter, it's going to be a new tower. And you have to actually complete it to actually get back into that one. So if you left early, that one, you know, you can no longer get, you're kind of barred from that one. You can't get back in. So now you go, you'd you have to go to the next one. But if you do complete it, like this idea of what happens if you complete them all, I think something should happen, whether it's really bad or really good. All right. So that, that stems my, my next question of who made this? Is this some... You know, God or divine being of positive that's supposed to train adventurers to be able to handle the the threats of the world. And in order to level up, you must do this. You run a couple of sessions doing other things, and then, oh, now I got to go to the tower to level up. And that's the requirement for the world. You don't level up until you've completed the level tower. It's a fun and interesting way to do it if you want to have a mixture of dungeon crawl and world exploration. It could be, you know, a, a trap. This could be a horrible, evil thing that if the legends say that, you know, fame and glory will be yours. But you get to the top and you've got an evil god, a fiendish creature, a, you know, whatever, insert big bad... And it's like, oh well, you've 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 made it here, and now I will feast on your souls. And it's your epic conclusion to the game, without the party having that draw up to know what they're actually going to be facing. See, I I kind of like the idea of one. There's a set number of towers. That number does isn't really relevant. Six, seven, thirteen, twenty, whatever. And then each tower has imprisoned, you know, in the, in the last level. Some some big bad, right? Some something that was meant to be uh, imprisoned and, and kept locked away. And there will be something that will tempt the players. But if they do it, it will free this thing, whether inadvertently or intentionally. But that's only part of it. Because there's 13 of them on 13 different planes. Uh, and living, living and not living or trapped in between those 13 different planes, there's a space. It's another prison. Once you once you've unlocked all the towers, and and you know all of these bad people have been released, it unlocks the center, which is like that might be Cthulhu, <laughs> or some other elder horror, or you know, or some chained god, or something that's been locked away and it's bad. I I could uh I could get behind that. You know you you've got, you've got the ability to then run run a game. Or run multiple games where these towers are involved, or maybe you hand wave that other adventurers are are solving these things, and then 
you know, now you now you've unleashed the horror. Or, you know, what if the things that are imprisoned, they're not really imprisoned. They sacrifice themselves to f- to make this like containment field. Right. And you get to the top and you're like, oh, there's this caged unicorn. Or you figure out, oh, this unicorn has been turned to a stone statue. I must free it. It's a good creature. And what you don't realize is you've inadvertently broken one of these things free. You know, and so it could be things like that as well that you, that you could do where you're kind of like making the players make these hard decisions. And there's probably clues throughout the tower to say uh, that there's a reason for it. And you probably don't want to do this, but someone might do it anyway or they may not understand the clues. And the people outside the tower, they probably don't know the original purpose of the tower. They don't know the connection with the planes. But that brings us to the town itself, the thing that sprung up around it. Like, is the tower itself, like, walled off and guarded to keep people out? Is there certain credentials you have to show to go back in? I mean, to go in at all? Is, you know, it, you know is it a rite of passage? Is it a monetary thing where, hey, you pay us and you can go in here and seek your fame? Or is it, are you worthy enough to gain entrance to the tower? I, I, I actually like both. You know, you get fame and glory for going into the tower, but I like the fact that it could, it, it could cost something because then, you know, you can, you can put rewards in the dungeon, but they're going to then have to expend some money if they want to go back. And maybe every level's a gamble. Maybe that's another another chart to be, you know, is this a is this a, a plus? Are you gonna get more than what you would cost to to be on the next to go to the next level? Or are you gonna get less or this or just enough? And and it, it becomes this like potential resource drain if if they're rolling poorly enough. And I mean that is kind of like the premise behind the yawning portal. Like dude sets up shop and is like all right, well, this is kind of like a curiosity that people can come come, come look and see and look down the hole. Some people just get lowered down and come right back up to say they did it like thrill seekers. Others go to seek their fame and fortune. But either way, this guy that opened the tavern, he's making money off of it. People are coming, they're drinking, they're staying. Maybe they're paying to go down, maybe they're not. It, you know, it just became a thing. It became a thing for him. So, like... The, the question is, like, if you were to use this in your game is how you differentiate from that. How are you going to do it to make it, you know, interesting and different? And off the same premise, what springs up around it? What laws? What rules? Well, all right. Well, Colorful before, characters. Bef- before we get into all of that, an idea just, just popped into my head. Um, like, if we're talking about it in a very rich arcane world, and we're talking about the general populace has no idea... Like what's going on, or or what the tower is meant for? You know, they don't know that it's you know going to going to release something. Like, what if it's total like Game of Thrones style, where there's literally a magic projection in town of what the party is doing? Oh, so like so. they can actually watch. So it draws crowds whenever people actually go in, and you, like you could actually have people betting on or betting against. What the party is doing. So there's an arena with like scrying that's set up. And and maybe, you know, maybe what it is is actually like part of getting, gaining entry is you have to wear this ring or wear this amulet or something. And that's how the scrying happens. Yeah. So they kind of like set up like an amphitheater and people show up and like, oh, someone's going in. And like it becomes the big event. So like you, you, you pay as an option to, you know, get in there, you know, and you have the ability to, if you do well... You have the, the you know you get a portion of the pot, but there's some there, there's there's some person who's making out either way. He's the he's the ringleader of this, and I I think that that person could be you know a really cool NPC, and he wants people to know about this tower because he wants people to go in. Great job! I think you just created X crawl. <laughs> X crawl. It's literally a, like a gay TV reality game show. Uh, based off of Dungeons and Dragons, the idea of dungeon crawling. It was like, I think it was like a 3.5 something. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely, it was literally a thing. Um, and was, was that the, like the, the D20 modern version? I, yeah, I, I don't even, I don't know the details. I just know it was set up like a reality show. You dungeon crawl, you go through it like Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, and I, and it was like a D20 system and it came out, I think it came out in like the 3.5 hour 
So th that's definitely a thing. There's definitely a thing. And but that doesn't mean we, you you couldn't do something like that in your game if that if that's fun for you, you know. And you you know you can make it as deadly or not not as deadly as you want. You have things like the Running Man to steal from. So there's definitely different directions you can go with it. You know, like you said, the ringleader type guy, the the announcer, he's going to be this. He's going to be a, a probably a flamboyant and fun showman type character. You might have rival factions that spring up and. And maybe different people, you know, they send their quote unquote champions in. Maybe you, it's even like instead of a venturing party that's worked together for years, it's like these different people pony up like their best guy to go in and like people bet on how well people are going to do and who's going to survive or how long they're going to last. You, know, you could you could literally have the, the traps and monsters be, you know, if we're, if we're talking about something that's so powerful that it has the ability to create whatever it needs, like perhaps the, the, the watchers could pay for what trap, what hazard, what things that they want to put in there. Well, so, sure. If you're, if you're kind of going off of the idea that it is more like a game show and it's like it, it's been created for this purpose. But the other idea, too, is like, well, what if... What if one of the things that has made the towers grow stronger and more powerful too is like if they're able to, if they're able to like feed off of emotions, especially like more base and negative emotions. So by also by per performing the service and doing this thing, like it's making it worse, mm. right? It's feeding it's feeding the towers, making them stronger, perpetuating this kind of horror show that's been going on. And maybe our ringleader guy is actually from another plane or something disguised. As like the good guy, but yeah, no, he's he's I feeding this thing. I wouldn't want him to be the good guy. Like he he really should be like you know your charismatic bad guy who doesn't actually get into the into the thick of it. He's there for the tower and he's there to make money. But if he's an elephant and the tower is actually like in the elder brain that you're traveling through, mm. or something weird and strange, and that's why it always changes because you know because it appears to be a tower, but. It's actually like an ill-fed elder brain, and it's siphoning off energy from this community or other communities, and and because when you enter in, like actually the things that you're going through aren't real, but they can affect you as if they were. Like that would just be another take, completely different take on it, if you wanted to go weird and warped and twisted. So that's a uh, that's multiple directions. So we've got you know the the fiendish tower. The Cthulian Horror Tower, we've got the Elder Brain Tower, and we've got the Game Show Tower. Right, or all of the above, depending on how you want to do it. So, you know, just some ideas, some thoughts. Uh, what would you do? Would you run this kind of style game? If you want to really delve into dungeon delving, this would be a great way to do it, where perpetually there's a dungeon for the players to constantly go through and come back to town. You could totally do that. But we got a place where you can discuss it, and that is down in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Come hang out with us all on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.